Have you ever dreamed of being a rock star performing killer songs to the roar of a crowd? Well, Harmonix, a Boston-based developer, has now made it possible, even if you can't play a note on a guitar. Get ready to hone your skills on the world's newest musical instrument, the PlayStation 2. Frequency is a revolutionary rhythm music game that will convert gamers into musicians and probably a lot of musicians into gamers. More than anything else, Frequency is a game about making music, about playing music. We've really tried to turn the game controller into a new kind of musical instrument that players need to master in order to beat the game. We think there's two things that really separate Frequency from a lot of the other music games that we've played. Uh, one of them is that since it's a multi-track environment, you get much more deeply involved into like the fabric of the music because you're listening to each track individually and you can hear what each one does. The other thing that's different is a big part of the game is the remix mode whereby you can take all the components of the song and put them together pretty much however you like to make your own remixes of the songs that we, uh, that we have in the game. In Frequency, you enter a world that looks nothing like you've ever seen and by using the easy to learn controls, you'll be making music in no time. Uh, the gameplay in Frequency is like Tempest meets Dance Dance Revolution, where you're actually traveling down a tunnel of music, and you choose a particular track to play, which is a particular instrument, like drum, bass, voice, guitar, and you have to press the buttons to the rhythm of that particular track to complete that track. Visually, this game is uh, quite different from any of the preceding music games in that it's an intense visual overload experience we're trying to capture rave-like intensity with the visual experience in this game, and that's really never been touched on in any of the other games. Picture yourself going down a, a tube or a tunnel that's got eight sides, and each one of those sides has a different instrument on it. So one of the sides may have a kick and snare track. One of the sides might have a, a bass track. One might have a guitar. And a vocal. The key to a music game is having great songs, and Frequency has one of the best lineups of artists ever assembled for a video game. In terms of the music, uh, instead of just using kind of backdrop video game music, we've actually gone out and licensed a bunch of great uh, kick-ass music from some fantastic bands, and so the music that you're playing in this game is, is real music by top bands that you've heard on the radio, and not just you know what people normally think of as video game music. The roster of artists who've contributed songs to Frequency is one incredible compilation. No Doubt, Power Man 5000, Fear Factory, Low Fidelity All-Stars, and Orbital all have songs in the game. And many of the songs were written for the game, or are custom remixes you can't hear anywhere else. Sony asked us, gee, is there any bands that you'd like to have in the game? And uh, Josh, the music director, and I said, gee, what about Curve? I wonder if they'd do a track. They're not a huge draw in, uh, in the, the U.S., but uh, they, were sort of, they were sort of pioneers of electronic rock in the early 90s, and I've always been a big fan. They did a custom track for us in two weeks, and we were thrilled. It came out great. One of the artists who really surprised me was DJ Qbert. I didn't know what to expect from him. The first time the guys came to me uh, about Frequency, I was like, okay, cool, let's, let's do some uh, whatever scratching incorporated in the video games. And uh, as, as I was playing the game and testing it out, and I was like, whoa, this is, this is really cool. I was pretty addicted at, at the start. Playing Frequency and scratching is kind of like the same type of energy, sort of, because when I scratch, it's free and, and you're totally like, having fun. And, and it's the same thing with video games. You're just releasing your soul through just having fun. It turned out even better than I expected. The Cubert level is out of control. It's probably my favorite track in the game now. But frankly, during the development process, every time we got a new track from one of these artists, it was there was always you know excitement through the office because everyone was so psyched to get their hands on a new uh, on a new song. Getting such an amazing group of artists involved in the game was a big challenge for the developers at Harmonix. When we first started calling around to the, to the artists and their management, I mean, their curiosity was definitely peaked. But it wasn't until they actually saw the game that they really started to get excited about it. So killer, dude. One of the biggest hurdles was just actually setting up meetings with these people, just actually getting access to them. Because once we did, everybody saw like the potential of it. And, and if at all possible, they wanted to be a part of it. I first heard about this game, I got an email from Ryan at Sony and he told me that they were working on a music game. He kind of gave me the rundown a little bit, he's all, yeah, you know, you guys could write a song or we could take a song from your record and the person playing it can actually remix it. They could almost create their own track out of it and I thought that was a great idea. 
In addition to the music that the bands have provided for the game, they've also provided some imagery, either short video clips or pictures, and we take that imagery and use it in the game world. So in the arenas, there are these large billboards, and actually those video clips and pictures get splattered onto those billboards so that as you're playing, for example, the No Doubt level, then there'll be images of Gwen Stefani on these billboards in the cybernetic world behind you. The depth and frequency comes not only from the songs in the game, but the different areas in which you make your music. There are 27 different songs in the game, but each song you can play in any number of different arenas, and the arenas are essentially visual backdrops for the tunnel that you fly through. They've got sort of different visual themes to them. As you progress through the game and beat more and more levels, you unlock more and more arenas, until if you win the game on Expert, you've unlocked all eight arenas. In single player, you're, you're trying to beat enough patterns to stay alive to get all the way through the song. Multiplayer is a little different. In multiplayer, you're actually trying to get more points than your opponent, and you have various power-ups in ways of kind of beating your opponent down. Uh, it's kind of similar to a, you know, sort of a kart racing game in that way. There's a lot of flexibility in this game. There's a lot of room to add to what's already there. When you're in single player mode, after you unlock all the song, you actually can also go in and kind of jam along with it. You can just kind of improvise. And there'll be notes, just like a little solo going in over everything. Or there'll be a scratch track where you can go in and scratch over the samples. So you can just kind of add your own beats over on top of it. You can recreate what's done, and then you can kind of add your little signature on top of that. When you go into remix mode, you can basically just start from scratch and do your own version of that song. As they worked on the game, the developers realized that they were making something completely new, turning a video game into a musically creative experience. I think the idea behind Frequency from the developers was to give people who didn't necessarily have the, the time or the ability or the skills to, to write or produce music to get the, the enjoyment of actually creating music. You know, I think it's going to appeal to a lot of different people for that very reason, because everybody loves music. You know? Everybody's cool loves music. <laughs> One of the things we figured out was there's just millions and millions of kids with really good video game skills for which they get no real credit, but it's a real skill. Like, so the high concept that we came up with was, hey, let's build a game that allows you to express yourself musically with a skill set that you already have, namely playing video games. So what we've really tried to do in this game is present an experience to the user which looks and feels like a video game and they can use the skills that they already have as video gamers to get inside it and master it. But at its core, it's a game about making music and they realize once they're into it that what they're really doing is not playing a video game so much as playing music. Oh.